blessé, tu es accouché, bon, il t'est parlé. Si mal mène, voilà, bah, moi, si l'entend, moi, m'en déroulé. Tous les genoux à compter, pour garder ou occuper. Bring it to you from a local, regional, and international perspective. The Windsor Park is the only park that is usually filled when the West Indies team is playing. If you look at Trinidad, the park is empty. Barbados, the park is empty. Antiguan don't even bother go to cricket anymore. It's Sports Connection on Kyrie FM. Every Tuesday from 6.30 p.m. We agree to disagree. But at the end, we do it in the inches of sports development in Dominica. I heard Dominican trying to defend dropping shit and I was... Sports Connection, every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., right here on Kyrie FM. You just have to listen. As we listen to this sports connection, we say welcome and good evening to everyone. It's indeed a pleasure. As we are about to make a start this evening, we're just going to take some word from our sponsors and we will be right back. Mazem Ortinale could do it sent ever kid you. I find the skin of my house as a disease called Pentepis has to do with paint. You may know what are the symptoms? Here is Sinton. Well, it's as if somebody graphiate and the gloss three has departed from it. You do well, you have come to the right place and the right brand. Do it best quality paints. You do there are two types the master touch for interior and exterior, Lao Pabu's PS primer, and the color solution. With both of them, you can mix and match. Souvenir could let to match anything in your house, even your soap dish. Just bring it in. Do it best quality paints. The primer for all services floor paint, Pulaku, or your garage, wall paint, ceiling paint, and for your steps, Pumunpa Chichile. As to Bob on you, let's step la mouille. Plus, every paint accessory you can think of, just lay shell. Do it best quality paint, Kote. Do it center, as to Goodwill Road. Multinadi, I call it the paint laboratory. Yes, do it best with. Do it best quality paints, and we do it best right here on Kyrie FM every Tuesday evening with another episode of the Sports Connection. We say welcome to our listeners on the various on the various frequencies. If you're listening on 88.7, we say good evening. If you're doing so on 93.1 or 107.9 FM, we say a pleasant good evening to you. And we're not forgetting our listeners who have joined us on the Facebook Live. We say a pleasant good evening to you. It is always a pleasure and a joy to have you as our followers and listeners on the show, The Sports Connection. This evening, we I want to just apologize for the absence of Mr. Anthony Scott Scotland, who is my usual co-host. This evening, he cannot make it in studios, and we're hoping to connect with him as we do some dialogue. Um, we will, as it relates to the program this evening, we're expecting to have with us the former vice president, Mr. Edgar Robinson, who would like to maybe just put on put into context the call for the resignation of the current president of the Dominic Amateur Basketball Association. I, I am sure that we are all aware of the the noise that has been that is being made 
um, among the basketball circles in Dominica as it relates to the the, um, the tenure of the current president, um, Mr. Donson Maggie Peters. We saw as a result of the turmoil that's ongoing, and um, we saw the the resignation of the general secretary, Mr. Jerry Williams, and the, the day following after, we saw the, the, the resignation of the vice president, Mr. Peter Ricketts. So there's some turmoil in basketball, and we would like to put this into perspective, and um, we will be joining, or we're expecting to be joined with the former vice, former president of the Dominican Amateur Basketball Association, the long time serving and stalwart in Dominican basketball, a name that's very synonymous, synonymous sorry, to basketball, Mr. Edgar Robinson. We also would like to contact um, the, the, the current pu public relations officer who he himself had alluded to a possible resignation. However, he has opted to remain to continue to serve. And um, there were calls by the assistant secretary treasurer of the DABA for, for teams to, to write in so they could uh, organize for a special general meeting to deal with the issues surrounding the the, the saga that is ongoing. And um, Josiah Morris, who is the PRO, should be calling in this evening. But um, I also, at this, at this moment, I just want to take a break and um, and send out our, our, our sympathetic um, sentiments to Mr. Dwight Dwight. Um, Timothy, we, we, his mom has been struggling for a while um, with the dreadful disease cancer and um, she is currently um, very low, I was told. Um, so we just want to reach out to Dwight. Dwight is someone who, regardless of his circumstances, he's, he, when he put his hands for service, when he puts up his hand for service, he, he puts his hand to the plow and he works hard regardless of the situation and through it all, he was struggling um, single, I'm um, sorry, Fis Unik, as we refer to that as the only child and of his mom. So he was there with his struggles, hustling, trying to make things work. Um, and and I, I don't think many persons knew of the struggles that he was going through as it relates to his mom. So we just want to say to Dwight, hold strong. And uh, God knows best. And um, he will never give you more than you can bear. So Dwight, stay strong. And um, as you know, as a friend, as a brother, I will always be there for you in whatever way I can. So we just want to say hold strong, Dwight. Um, later in the in the evening, we are also expecting to have with us um, the president of the Dominican Netball Association. The president of the Dominican Netball Association is going to break some news on Carry FM right here on the Sports Connection as it relates to this regional tournament that is being planned for Dominica. And um, uh, those of us who had witnessed and those of us who listened to the, the, the remarks stemming out of the opening of the netball and the commissioning of the hard court at the stadium at at the stadium um we we knew we had something that very special in dominica and stemming out of that we were able to attract or to plan for a regional netball tournament the president of the dominica netball association should be joining us as we as she put things into perspective and then later in the evening we will be contacting mr heston charles Heston Charles and I will be talking some cricket as you're aware. The West Indies will be going into the, the World Cup. Their opening match will be against England. Um, and the West Indies are the defending champions. And um, the World Cup will start somewhere in October. And um, we will be talking about that with Mr. Heston, Heston Charles. And we are also we will, we will also be talking about the women's performance, I think the West Indies women's performance is uh, is lacking, if you ask me, as opposed to the other performances. We have two other series going on right now. We have the England and New Zealand women. They are in battle. And also in Australia, we have the mighty Australians. They're going up against the strong Indian team. So um, we have some cricket that we can talk about. And um, we may just call and ask to get some ideas as to what is happening with the Olympic Committee elections. When will that be? I'm not sure. We've heard the, the DOC president or the general secretary of the DOC say anything in that regard as it relates to when nominations will be open because I think that is also making some noise in the sports arena in Dominica. So maybe we'll just sound the call for some sentiments on the, the 
Dominica Olympic Committee's election, which is pending. We all know that that is due. Usually it is due the year after the Olympics, but because the 2020 Tokyo Games were postponed to the 2020 to 2021, we will then have um, be having the elections of the Dominica Olympic Committee in the same year of the election. And I think that should be unique to this year um, because I'm hoping that the next Games 2024 should be in which should be in France will take place in 2024 and and it will give us get us back to the normal cycle which will keep us the four years and then in 2025 where we should have the next doc general elections um that should be the year following the olympics so we're going to take some word from our sponsors and we will be right back as we delve into this evening's discussions rudolph thomas enterprise in portsmouth your suppliers of building materials and hardware products over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, Portland and tile cement, steel rods, galvanized and fence pipe, and Rudolph Thomas can meet all your wire needs. Galvanized roofing sheets, doors, windows, toilet sets, face basins and bidets, PVC piping, fittings and lattice. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies, and check out their line of electrical and hand tools. And Rudolph Thomas is your one-stop shop for hard-to-find items like fiberglass mat and fiberglass resin and welding rods. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. Yes, we say welcome back and thank you for staying tuned with us. Um, those of us who are with us on 88.7, 93.1 or 107.9, we say thank you for staying tuned in the first. And those of us who are following on the Facebook page, we also say thank you. As is customary here on the Sports Connection, we always dis um, designate some of our time to to encourage the general public for the, the vaccination drive that is required if we are to return to any sign or any semblance of normalcy. And um, as it relates to sports, we know, as we always say, the sportsmen and women of Dominica and globally, we cannot sanitize during games, especially for games like basketball and netball and volleyball. We cannot socially distance because they are contact sports. And um, we, we, we cannot wear masks because of the intensity of, of, of play. We need all our oxygen levels that we need. And so those protocols, as we always say, they, are, they, they, they will not be able to... To suffice in the fight against COVID if we are to return to, to to sports in general. And we are seeing in the rest of the Caribbean that we are having sports, but those organized levels, almost on the professional level, where we could put people in the bubble and when you break it, then you're gone, like as in the case with St. Kitts and Nevis when this young man who's, whose friend was in dire stress and he left the, the, um, the, the bubble. And he was asked to leave because he could not continue the, the, the CPL. So we are aware of, of those things. Um, and as a result, in our case in Dominica, for local sports, if we had to go back into the situation that we once all enjoyed, and that is being able to play and to populate our courts in the various locations and our savannas in the various locations, those of us who are aware of what the Lindo Park looks like, today it looks more like a Jurassic Park because it is filled with grass as opposed to the usual hundreds of people every afternoon enjoying the, the, the various sports. We would see some girls' football. We would see, oh, sorry, women's football. We would have seen softball, cricket. We would see young men playing football as well. And while on the court, we see sometimes you see court football or we would also see basketball. And this place now is empty because, because of the fact that COVID is ravaging our country. We are seeing some, some in improvements in the numbers. But we will also continue to sound the call for us as sportsmen and women to go out there and be part of the vaccination drive. Um, we really need to do that if we are to get back to, to, um, to normalcy and to be playing back on the courts. So again, I would just want to sound out that call and let us get involved in the vaccination drive. And um, as we go through, if we each, if, if we are each other's brother's keeper, Maybe we could get one friend who is not vaccinated, one team member who is not vaccinated, and encourage them to, to, to be vaccinated, as this is one of the ways that sportsmen and women can contribute to the recommencement of sport 
on the island. Okay, I, at, at this time, I just want to take this opportunity to wish my son, Mr. Yuwani John, happy birthday. Today is your big 15. Big boy, daddy, love you. And um, continue to, to make your daddy proud. I just want to use that opportunity to publicly do so and to tell you, enjoy what's left of your birthday. So we're now delving into the, the topic for this evening. As I said, we will be putting into perspective the, the calls for resignation. I still have not been able to make contact with, with the planned, um, with our planned um, contact we're supposed to have this evening, and that is Mr. Edgar Robinson. But I just want to remind our callers that the numbers to call are 448-7334 if you want to engage in the discussion on the as we put into context the call for resignation for Mr. Dunson Maggie Peters. And also on the overseas line, you can reach us on 305-906-6186. Or if you want to do so on via the WhatsApp, you can do so on 613-1307. So these are the numbers to call if you want to join the, the conversation. But let me, let, let me jump the ball with this. Um, last week, we, we, we saw, we heard of calls for the resignation of Mr. Dunstan Peters. And Dunstan is the president of the Dominica Amateur Basketball Association. And persons were wondering why why um we were calling for his resignation. And um let me for one say that um when we do things on principle we should be able to stand by it. And I am one such person and so if I am to stand alone then I will still stand alone. I think um by the actions of Mr Mr. Dunson Maggie Peters, that um, he should be called to resign. Um, we will delve into some of the discussions that have been taking place on Ireland as it relates to that. But we know that Dunson was part of a team of protesters outside of the the um, financial center. I think that might have been last week, Monday, and um, outside of the financial center, and um, some of the placards. Were were, were, to, were were to me or in my view not not supporting the call of the, the calls of the of the corporate citizens and the private sector um dunstan did corroborate the, the the sentiments of some of the callers in that um he was protesting the call by made by um some of the members on a, on a panel discussion uh who, who called for a mandatory vaccine and Dunstan just aptly happened to be standing next to one of those um one of those placards saying no mandatory vaccination and uh, and to put things into context and the role that Dunstan plays as the president of basketball should be this I am of the view and call us if you think otherwise please feel free to call us on four four eight seven three three four or three zero five nine zero six six one eight six, but I am of the view that one of the roles that Mr. Peters should be playing as the president of the Dominica Amateur Basketball Association or any president of any association currently in Dominica now um, should be to get sports to continue playing or to start back playing, and um, our actions should not show that we are against the drive for make sports play because your responsibility as president, as leader, as leader of such an association would be to get sports to be playing again and um we need the vaccination and maybe he was not calling for for vaccination or not maybe he was not calling for us not to get vaccinated but one of the reasons why dominica dab has not been able to hold a national league for a few years now is because of lack of funding and the because of the absence of a very strong and effective fundraising committee in the DABA, very often, more often than not, the funds have to be sourced from the private sectors, from the private sector, sorry, which is our corporate citizens, um, through sponsorship for to run our basketball leagues. In recent times, we've had um, a number of different companies. We've had Flow, we've had Digicel, we have a call on the line. Let's take this call. Caller, welcome to the Sports Connection. Good evening. Good night, sir. Yes, good evening. I believe to myself 
with that situation you've done, son, Maggie, and that basketball thing. My brother, when you're in a certain organization and of repute, and of world repute, and, and you're trying to push an agenda of basketball, I, I, I think he have the passion. He likes basketball. He likes to help the youth with basketball. But you cannot, you cannot mix apples with, with grapefruit. You will put yourself in problem. And what I'm seeing, Dunstan Magan, the Eva group, Munsewi. Munsewi is a political group looking for, looking for, for looking for their own agenda. So you have to look to separate yourself from, from this thing. So, you know, if you're against vaccination, but the private cooperative people, how you can go to them? You can't go to them as, pres as president. And let me tell you, that, and that's not the only incident, you know. Just yesterday, Dunstan Magan was in Grand B politizing and telling them people not to build apartments and his agriculture. Well, well, we well, well, well Kola, let's 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 rather stick to the basketball conversation. Um and I have no um, evidence to suggest that he was up at Grand Bay and so I would not want to put myself in well, my brother, water, but my no brother, no we we keep in the brother, dialogue. I'm telling you I telling you the interview I hear with this people up at Grand Bay and he was part of that. Oh, okay. But you understand but, so you can't you can't you can't have your cake and want to eat it. Look the, the, but look but Colonel, to be honest and to be fair, it is okay for me to share my political perspective. Alright? It is okay for me to share who I support. However, in when you, you when you wear the cap of president or when you wear certain caps, you have to be able to pick your fights. You have to know when to talk and when not to talk. But that's what I, that's what I'm trying to tell you, you know. Yes. I tell you he has a passion for basketball, he helping the youths. I like that. I see it in him. You have the ability to do it. But you cannot mix you cannot have your cake and want to eat it, my brother. When exactly. you know when I say like, be what you do, where you go, what you say. Yeah, exactly my point. And and, and the Color, what what really happened, right? Was one of those one of those um entrepreneurs on the show said that we need mandatory vaccine, and and the truth and in fact, if you want to be just wear an objective show, when if say I get COVID, right, in five days my COVID cure, maybe fourteen days, two weeks I on sick leave. My wife who also works, she's not positive, but because she's a primary contact, she also has to be on sick leave, right? Now what happens now is. The private sector is the only person that really feeling. Oh, sorry, the employers rather, because the same thing in the situation with the government. They, they, they are the ones that actually pay in our money because I would be paying my social security all my life. So if no social security, I have to pay him back because I'm sick. They don't really lose anything yet. They have not really lost anything. All right, but then well, the, the employer yeah. has to pay me, and I'm and I'm not rendering him a service. So we can understand why the employers are calling for mandatory vaccination. So even if you don't believe in mandatory vaccination, because the employer said that your reaction should not be a protest outside of his business or in front of the financial center or wherever to suggest that you are not supporting the employer. Maybe you're not supporting him in, in principle, but you cannot go outside there and be doing that because tomorrow you're going to have to come to that same employer, to that same um, corporate citizen and say, hey, you know, a DABA is cash trap. But we, run to, we need to run a basketball league and we need $25,000 to run that league. He's going to say, I mean, you are not supporting my cause. Reality is reality, you know. Basketball is a contact sport. Close, close up. And if you want the sport to go on as a president, you have to learn to do the right thing. You get a contact sport. You want to play the sport. You don't want to kill the sport. Exactly. You know, in other words, now there are certain things you have to say. I mean, you can, you can say you're taking, if you're in your group, in your private capacity, you can tell somebody something, but you can't come openly and, and practicing that thing when you're a president of a group and you have to go to the same private sector that he looked at the other queries with, with, with mandatory vaccination. You have to use your head, man. You know, you cannot use your head as a thing. So in other words, that cap, it means that he can't carry that because of what? You, you, you want to have his stick on it? Exactly. And, and the worst thing about it is, let us, let us assume that, that the president was wearing okay like he said <laughs> he came rose as himself and not as president and one of my colleagues said you can't cut your head if you are two heads and put it on and come put put it once once you are president you wear that cap right but somebody's videoing you because you're protesting and your remarks are, i know i am I, uh, oh yeah I mean, he's essentially his remarks were saying something of that nature that i know i am the president of basketball so take the video and send it in those group chat basketball not paying me you don't you don't you don't you have to have that 
that what we call is it diplomacy that is the correct word but you have to be able to be diplomatic in the process and try to uh, as much as possible to divorce yourself to, to divorce your your position from certain things you don't you don't, don't say those things because what but you now far, do you have not brought as far as, far as i see them as far as i see them on, i look at it he, he being as president of the basketball association he, he not doing the association any good what are you doing there so no good and you go nowhere i share so the sentiments too is either he had to resign as president and check his moon moon cell with a political group and and do your thing that's it you I, choose choose this day which who you will serve <laughs> by telling that you know choose this day who you will serve that's it Macola, i don't make i don't make i don't make um, excuses for for supporting the politi my political party of choice so if moon is his is a political party or, or anything of that nature and that is what he wants to support he can go ahead and support it what i'm saying is because you're a president you have to know how to behave when you're behaving. for example let me let me tell you something i listen to i listen to an interview the, the these guys on 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 q and they will interview the moon you people and the guy who is in charge of that monster you know what the guy said the, the, what the guy said the guy said our, our our aim is in one year to take out the government and the other year is to put an interim government these guys are serious about your political thing you can't tie up yourself with that and your president you but, have but, a truth but, man what I, I just go with your, your politics and leave the basketball alone because what you want to make that association suffer if you so love basketball and the kids you're going to make that suffer with your foolishness. Color, to, be, color, to be fair, to be fair to, to Maggie in terms of his party of choice, one we, I am aware of one president in Dominica who who contested the election and is the president of an association. Yet still, you do not hear that kind of a controversy in that particular association as a result of him being president of the association and him being a member of a political party. And as you said rightly, you have to you you you. You cannot have your cake and eat it. So you have to know, you have to pick your battles rightly. Now, let me tell you something. To, to tell you the truth, I like Maggie's style. His, his style of wanting to go, he really want basketball to go places. And he has been doing a lot of stuff, you know, and scholarships. He has been one of these guys who get getting scholarships for certain people and doing his thing. You know, I like that. You know, I don't listen him about that. But my brother, sometimes you have to learn to choose. You have to learn to choose between something and another thing. Because it doesn't make sense. So I, I, I tell him, Maggie, if he ain't me, Maggie, if you love the kids, you love basketball, my brother, leave, leave that group alone. Because that, that does dent in all what you do for me. That does dent in your movement and what you really want to do for people. Have a blessed night, my brother. Yeah, blessings. Thank you for calling, caller. Okay, this caller is suggesting that you cannot have your cake and eat it as it relates to Maggie's um, affiliations with his... With his um, group i want to call it a pressure group for want of a better word that is always willing and ready to, to protest and, and as we are saying is sometimes he wears his basketball or uses basketball presidency as a platform and i wonder if it is for notori notoriety because i remember once he was protesting calling for the um and that protest was calling for the resignation of sorry the the um ousting of the prime minister by any means necessary and um and then he was he was present on scene if a basketball in his hand waving. And if you if you are the president of basketball, you cannot do that. Let's take this call on this line. Caller, welcome to the Sports Connection. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Yudi. Robo here. Yes, Robo Wagor. Not too bad, no Nice man. to have you. I've been trying to get you, so finally we have you. You know, you're a very busy yeah. man. Well, re actually, I got caught up in the traffic thing. There, they had a little accident, so oh, kept okay. me back a little we bit. We trust that nobody is hurt, and we, we, we pray that everybody <laughs> gets home safely. Yeah, I think everything went on. It was just a little bit send the bender, but you know, some people like to call the cops and verify things on site. Yeah, well, you need to use the law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So t t talk to me, Robert. We, I know you, you, you joining us late, and we're supposed to be joined um, by Miss um, Regina Walsh, Mrs. Regina Walsh, as we talk some netball, but. We will, we will, we just remake the necessary adjustments as we go through the program. So, Mrs. Walsh, if you're listening, we're just going to be engaged with Mr. Edgar Robinson for a while um, as we talk some of the, the, the happenings in basketball. But, Robo, yeah, the, you you were sharing some sentiments on, on, on the call. I know you have been a stalwart in basketball for many, many, many years, a pioneer of the sport in Dominica. I may, I may, I may want to add. Tell us uh, about what your, what your feelings are about this current situation in basketball. 
Well, honestly, I think um, basketball has not reached its lowest ebb. Uh, it has never been that low. And uh, I, I, I don't think really the people involved, especially the current president, is looking at basketball. I think he's more looking at himself and what he aspires to be. Nonetheless, um, there's, I think there's a special general meeting being called. So um, we'll wait and see before we elaborate too much. We'll wait and see what comes out of that meeting and then we'll be able to, um, you know, go into further detail. But I may say that um, the current situation doesn't augur well for basketball. Certainly not. Um, it, 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 we must understand that um, when we volunteer to serve in, this, in these positions, we have a responsibility. And it's a responsibility not just to talk on the radio. It's a responsibility to, 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 to satisfy the needs of the sport. It's a responsibility to the sponsors. It's a responsibility to the world governing body of basketball. As a matter of fact, every basketball game that is played, sanctioned by DABA, will be sanctioned by FIBA. And um, we have been affiliated to FIBA for 40 odd years, I think 46 years. Maybe the third country in the Caribbean to be affiliated to FIBA. So it, this is serious business. This is not something that we can go play in the fold with and making all kind of political statements on other radio stations and telling one two stories and all kind of thing. I think that is outside the parameters of basketball. Basketball is a sport. It, at one time, it was a rival in cricket and football. That's how far, you know, it has, it has, it has gotten. And it can stay there. It, it, can, it can go back up. But we need to get serious. We need to get people who love the sport. We need to get people who respect authority. That is most important. We have to have people who respect authority and understand that if you don't want to have anybody above you or you don't want to respect authority, you don't get involved in those kind of things. You know, and I, I think it's, it's, it's sad to see, you know, when we try to do something, we try to do something for the benefit of the sport. We have other people just ridiculously criticizing and making all kind of awful statements that are not true. I'm very surprised that some of the people who go laughing and chatting and making a big mockery of this thing and so on and... It, it, it's not warranted. It doesn't help. But, well, so. well, well, Robo, um, I, as, as you were alluding to, I think sometimes we need to have a certain level of decorum when you play those roles because uh, as, um, as, the, as, the, as the president of the basketball, you're expected to be in the presence of, of, of many different people from different walks of life and some very powerful people. And, um, and I think, as you rightfully alluded to, we should have some level of decorum and the respect that you spoke about and the discipline to be presenting yourself um, with that form of respect. But, Robo, um, we saw the, 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 the um, resignation of, of, of two very prominent men in the, in the DABA. I think they were very pivotal people in the DABA, um, in, in the people of Peter Ricketts and, and Jerry Williams. That is the, the vice president and the... And the general secretary resigning. Do you do, do you think that that um, re those resignations were, were were premature? Do you do do you think we should they should have waited for the special general the special general meeting before making that decision? But you see, Yuri, it sends a signal. It, it to me it tells me that there has been internal internal wrangling. There has been problems in the camp for a while, mm. and people probably cannot stand it anymore. But um, like I say, it's a voluntary organization you volunteer your time and volunteer no a lot of people seem to think there's money involved it's the reverse it takes money from you it takes your time it takes actual cash if you want to see the sport move on and when you try to do something um positive and um, that's what I'm, I'm not sure exactly what was the whole issue why the resignations came because i um, I don't want to get into the personal thing. I, I will talk to, to to Mr. Williams. I've spoken to Mr. Ricketts a little bit. But um, like I said, 
I would like to see what comes out of the the, the special general meeting. But yeah. surprisingly, I haven't heard anything from Miss Doctor Doctor Kazemi. He's supposed to be a member, a prominent member. But, but why you think? Why you think you should hear something from Doctor Doctor from Doctor Kazemi? Because he's a, he's a, he's a part of he's a part of the executive. And I mean, the, the executive should yeah. be um, by. By by the constitution, the executive should be what, nine members strong: president, vice president, treasurer, general no, secretary, assistant general secretary, PRO, and three yeah. committee members. So it should be nine members strong. So do you think so you should be all nine of them? You, you, you don't you don't have you don't have an opinion as a prominent member of the your member of the DOC. You know what I mean? You are member of uh, president of Kayak. You president. You 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 hold so many responsible position or prominent position in sport and you are part of this this whole melee if you want to say so i think you should say something i i i i think the silence says something that's my personal belief but you talk about you talk about um election elected and, and uh, the elected executive First of all, we won't go into um, now. Could you could you just hold this note? We need to take a break from our sponsors, and you stay on the line, please, Robo. As we take a break from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Over the heat and humidity? Yeah, boy, big and hot. Now's the time to invest in an energy-efficient Lennox AC unit from EMS Limited. Lennox AC units offers quiet cooling without bursting the bank. Ideal for home or business. Available in a variety of sizes, installation and servicing by our factory certified technicians. Choose Lennox, choose EMS, EMS. and keep comfortable while in control of your energy costs. Or 255-6813 or visit us in Canfield next to Auto Train. Say goodbye to the heat and hello to perfect air with Lennox AC. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying, Mr. Robinson, are you there for still? Yes, I'm there. Uh, I apologize there. for that sort of no small, small glitch. Yes, Robinson. So, but... As I, I was saying, you uh -huh. know, as, as you mentioned, um, elected member to your executive, I think this, this has been a problem in the, in the, in the, in the camp. Normally, the, the, well, the, 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 because of the way the constitution of the AB is set up, you do not vote for the president or for the general secretary or for anybody by the general body. What actually the way it's done, it's you you elect if you want a nine member executive or a seven member executive or eight member executive, the general body votes eight people and among the eight people decide who is going to be the chairman slash president also um, decide who is going to pick up what role and we thought when we were writing the constitution that that helped to to have people who want to hold certain positions because when the general body elects people well, a lot of the time the people are not capable or they're not interested in the actual sport or they're not interested in the position but if you are elected and then you among us we decide look can you or are you willing to hold this post or hold that post? It works much better. So one, the whole election of this executive, I think, wasn't done properly from the beginning. I'm not saying that. Well, I am why. not sure. I am not sure if it was not done properly, because um, I am not sure if there was a vote that would have been put for them to do the the open elections as it relates to electing a president and electing a position. So if it was done, and then you go into caucus, I am not sure, so I, I cannot yeah, give you see. some exact anything of, I cannot speak of it for authority. But I'm sure if we decide to vote uh, uh, a, a body in that manner, then whoever would have emerged as president would have been our vote. You understand? Because that is yeah, the manner we would have been aware of that. Yeah, but you see, you the, the, the thing is, the, the the constitution does not provide for it that way. 
That's the bottom line. If but you have to do it, then you have to amend, amend the constitution. The constitution. Or something. But So what I'm saying is, even it was done that way in a rush or so, let us just water under the bridge. You know, but all this amounts to even here in the president beating us just so I was elected by the general body and I'm not going to resign and all kind of things. You know, if you have to take the nitty gritty of it, all this, you know, is, is, is full of flaws. But, 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 let, let but, Robo, as, of, as of now, before we leave, because we have my next guest is, is we'll be engaging on my next guest and we've already taken 10 minutes from our time. But, um, we. The, the the call for the special general meeting to have the vote of no confidence tabled was made by um the assistant secretary treasurer mr dwight dwight timothy and um you have two teams or you're affiliated with two teams that's blazers one and blazers two what is, what is the position of your teams as it relates to that special general meeting and reacting to 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 that vote of no confidence well actually the 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 the, the blazers one and blazers two were supposed to have been represented by the secretary and um for some reason i don't know what happened i haven't when followed the secretary you mean secretary of the club of the club, club yes okay. i haven't i i understood that blazers withdrew and not to my knowledge but regardless who withdrew or who didn't withdraw the fact remains that something has to be done and even one team what regardless what happens we need to clear the air we need to get over this hurdle so that's why I'm saying there's supposed to be a special general meeting call. Let us wait and see what happens, what decisions are taken out of that meeting, and then we can go take it from there. Yes, Rebo. Well, I think you are a voice of influence, and um, I think the, the alleged withdrawal of the Blazers 1 and Blazers 2 um, letters for the for the um, vote of no confidence um, or for the, for the commission end of that meeting I think subsequent to that, Mr. Dwight, um, Dwight Timothy, he addressed the nation on, in public radio and announcing that we should get our teams to write and to to have that call for the special general meeting. So I think with your voice and your, your influential voice, you've been the head of the leader of, of, of Blazers Sports Club for a very long time. I think your influence, you should now impose your influence to get the, um, the, the club to to actually submit those letters. Because um, going forward, I think it's, it's a call for the general body. And we, the general body of basketball, need to know what we want. So if we you know, go into that meeting, if we were to go into that meeting and then we were to, to, to not vote for that no confidence or, or Maggie would be coming, coming out um, as a victor in, in, in that if that vote of no confidence goes through, then it would mean that's what we want. We want somebody who, when the executive takes a decision um, and... Um, you vote against the decision but you make a collective decision that you go in the public and go directly against um that decision i, I think if it, that's what we want then we can go ahead but if you want basketball to stay in the four i think we should actually um have him voted out not out of malice but out of principle that we're going to need somebody who's going to stand up there and mean well for basketball and um and if you mean it well, it's not be representing yourself, but you're going to be representing the entire basketball body. So it was a pleasure having you, uh, Mr. Robinson. A any final words? Yes, um, um, Yuri. Like I said, you know, I, it's been a pleasure being here. And um, let us just look forward to see what comes out of the, sort of pro the proposed meeting. And then we'll take it from there if we have to have further discussions. On that. Okay, then thank you very much, Rob um, Robinson. You're welcome. Yeah, and God bless you. Okay, we, this was the former president of the Dominic Amateur Basketball Association. He was a long standing member of the Basketball Association. He has moved aside, or stepped aside rather, for some new energies in basketball. And I can tell by the sound of his voice that he's not happy at all with what's currently going on. I think he said Dominic is at its all times lowest in basketball. Um, but let's, let, um, Robo, thank you for your sentiments. And um, callers, you are still free to call. Um, but we're going to take a break right now to get some word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, Portland and tile cement, steel rods, galvanized and fence pipe. And Rudolph Thomas can meet all your wire needs. Galvanized roofing sheets, doors, windows, toilet sets, face basins and bidets. 
PVC piping, fittings and lattice. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. And Rudolph Thomas is your one-stop shop for hard-to-find items like fiberglass mat and fiberglass resin and welding rods. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. Okay, we say thank you to all our followers on the Facebook Live and our listeners on the various frequencies. We say thank you for staying tuned with us as we continue. We're expecting to get on the line with us, Ms. Mrs. Regina Walsh. Mrs. Regina Walsh is the president of the Dominican Naval Association. We have a caller on the line. Let's take this call. Caller, welcome to the Sports Connection. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Is this Yuri? Yes, this is, and you are connected to this. You're right on the Sports Connection, Mrs. Walsh. But before before we, we take you, Mrs. Walsh, I want to respond to a text message that just came in as it relates to the conversation I was ongoing. It says, bro, if you are... If you, if you are talking sports, please talk about sports. Everybody have the choice. Keep the program a sports program. We don't like it on the other side. I just want to say to that um, to that person sending that message that uh, if you were listening, we, we were very clear, or I was very clear, that um, every man to his own order, you could choose whatever political party that you want to support. We're not talking that. What we're saying is, when you're choosing your battles, let it be one that represents sports. Okay? So um call um that is that I just wanted to make that um point to the um to the listener. So but anyway, thank you for your your sentiments, all ideas content, and it's, a, it's always a pleasure to have you send comments during this spot. So so Miss Mrs. Walsh, good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you this evening? I'm good, pleasant. It, it, I must say it's a pleasure to have you. It's always nice to hear your voice, and especially when you're nice on the Sports to, Connection. It's always nice to hear. Anytime in sports, it's always nice to hear it, you know. And I hope you are keeping safe and sound. Well, certainly, I, I, I must tell you that um, I've been vaccinated, and um, and I have I have resolved within myself to be tested every two weeks. So every oh. second Tuesday, I get tested, and so I did my... My most recent test was this afternoon at the stadium. Yeah. Normally, I'll do that up in Lapland um, because that's my where my my medical my medical files are as it relates to primary healthcare. So normally well, I do that in Lapland, but this time around I did it at the stadium. Well, and, um, well, Yudi, negative. So thank God for that. Well, Yudi, this is very good because I also I have been vaxxed and I have already taken my antigen test which proves that I'm negative, and I will continue going to take my antigen test until such time. Yeah, all right. I have done that when I was a child. My mother did that to me, and I did that to all my children. So right about now, it's just advocating this is not mandatory. But as we all know, everybody has a choice to make, and the choice is theirs. You can only advocate. It's only they can make the the choice. Thank you but for I'm adding your voice. So thank you for adding your voice to the vaccination drive, um, Mrs. Watch. Yes. Sir. And, and and let me let me say also, uh, in your in your capacity as president of the Netball Association, who would like Netball to continue something very soon. Of course we would, and I've also advocated. I've sent out a voice um, message to the team to encourage them because they have to play it safe. They have to let their loved ones be safe, their community, and also the country. They know how my and what my stand is, and I assume that everybody will do the right thing. Yeah, but, but Mrs. Walsh, you are here because um, we were supposed to have a regional netball tournament in Dominica, and because of, of the COVID situation, we we have some sad news. It's, <laughs> are we gonna call it sad news? Well, do you do you really want to call it sad news? I think this is just it just gave us the opportunity to plan even better. Okay, the so tell us about, about it. it. After our affiliates saw our opening of our national netball league in June, the tournament was supposed to have been in Antigua. And after seeing this, because we had sent the links to the affiliates, they called and asked if we could host it. There we wrote to the government of Dominica and they gave us a green light to host the tournament and that we were very happy. And one of the reasons is we were like a safe haven for COVID. We had no deaths. We had um, just about five active cases. So everybody, you know, we were the envy 
of the of the COVID. Yes, at one point, Dominica for the, for more than for more than one hundred days, Dominica was without a COVID case. Very good, yeah. very good. And and you see, because of that, now we because of the spike in the COVID, we had to since meet and discuss. And all the regional countries that are taking part in this tournament have had their share of the spike as well. And in that, their national teams, mostly all the national teams are not in training because of the COVID. So we, we came to that conclusion to get the, the tournament postponed to further date. And the date is February 10th to the 18th, 2022, what? next year. But Mrs. Walsh, could you tell us what would be the name of that tournament? Is it an OECS tournament or is it, or is it yeah, a, but, a CARICOM tournament? Well, this is the second edition of the OECS ECCB regional tournament. This okay. tournament used to be the under-23 tournament. But right about now, this is a ranking tournament. That is why we have the umpires coming from the International Netball Federation. So we will be ranked, the teams playing the tournament will be ranked during the, the, the tournament period. Well, that's, that's exceptional. And so we do have eight teams participating at this regional tournament. They being Cayman Islands and Barbados. They are not part of the OECS. But because this is a ranking tournament, they decided yes, they want you to play netball. So we have Antigua, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada and Dominica. So these countries make up the eight countries that will be taking part in this tournament. Okay. So 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 we we so where are we seeing that we have had an extra period of time for the planning? Um when when was it scheduled, did you say? The, it was scheduled for November 10, November 11th to the 19th. Okay, but so with the extra time, where are you with, with, the, with the planning process? Well, right about now, well, the government had the technical team on because they have to do their part, like getting the facility intact, you know. But right about now, we, the Dominican Netball Association, have put on board a planning committee so we can take the netball further. So there we will have enough time and more time for the total planning of this tournament. Okay, would you, would you want to reveal some of the people that might be on that planning committee? Well, we know there are persons who have been involved in sports, and we went through with them. We have... A player, players like um, Jane Guy, um, who has been a national player. We have Mrs. Fortin, who was once a president of the Dominican Netball Association. We have Carol Philip William and her husband, who both of them were national players, and they have done so much work for the sport that they played. And um, we have some other, we have you, you, D. John, we brought you on board. We brought Mr. Darrell Teet on board as well. We brought Mr. Lockhart on board. So we have a cadre of persons who have dealt one way or another with the planning of such a tournament. So um, with, with, with those kind of energies, I think you miss somebody like, I think maybe Alice Jones would be on that yeah. team as well. Oh, yes. Alice is part of our planning committee, and she's also part of the technical committee of the Netball Association that deals with the umpires and the scorers and timers. Okay. So so I think the excitement that I'm hearing from your voice that you, you are happy, in the, in, at least in the position that you are now. What, what about, um, what about um, the, the involvement of, of, of um, Her Excellency Lauren Banish roberts Well, this person, Our Excellency, Lauren has been at the forefront for netball in Dominica. We could not have done what we have done without Lauren. Even for our national league that commenced June 6th, Lauren was the one who got it where it started. And we will always be grateful to our, our ambassador at large, Lauren Bannis Roberts for that you know netball is Lauren. <laughs> Lauren has a special passion 
for the sport and dealing with netball to grow, to play, to inspire young girls and ladies. This is Lauren, and she's doing all she can as an ambassador at large for us netball because we all work tirelessly to create a better world through netball. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Walsh. Um, but but I, I want to wish you success. I, I know you are somebody who is very passionate about netball, and um, when you put your hands to the plow, you you tend to want to see things nice. And I mean, it's 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 been many years that I've known you, and um, you're that kind of a person. But as it relates to that that kind of, that magnitude of 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 an of a of a tournament, what? Could, could you give us a sense of the, the, the amount of the, for the budget, sorry, would look like as it relates to that kind of magnitude of the tournament? Well, for this tournament, because it is headed by, or the main sponsor is the ECCB, they give at least $120,000. But you know right about now, $120,000 is nothing when you compare to it's COVID time. Right about now, everything is changed. You you could have used the one twenty thousand just on accommodation, but right about now we cannot do what we used to do before. We could have had four people in a bedroom in a room. We cannot do that now. With either with COVID, you have to have it in the individual rooms. Exactly. So one. So and with we eight have, teams, and we with have eight teams, to, we have to double that budget. And doubling that budget, we need sponsors to come on board. And we're asking our corporate partners to just partner with us because we have not had a regional tournament in Dominica for a very long time. I think 2000 was our last tournament in Dominica. And I know the ambassador. She would also want regional and top international games to be played in Dominica. And she is looking for the Commonwealth Games when our indoor complex common stream in stock farm it may take us uh, three years but at least we know we will be having these games here in dominica yeah I, I i like i like your vision for that for the sport um mrs walsh i think when you said 2000 i think the last time we had an, an international regional tournament in dominica would have been 2001 uh, when 2001. we had that up in stock farm yeah at the, at the lauren barnes um lauren roberts Lawrence, Lauren Barnes Roberts Complex. Well, she has been there from day one, and her name will continue to be part and parcel of netball in Dominica because Lauren is the person who has netball. Well, I really have a passion for the sport, but if it wasn't for Lauren, I could tell you that much. Lauren is the person who keeps me kicking and working for the development of netball for the young girls. And ladies well, here in Dominica. So I think well, I think right now it's time for the ladies now that you actually cater for because I think your energies nobody can dispute the kind of energy that you're putting into it to to give you that kind of a support. And I would just want to sound the call to our, our corporate citizens and also the planning committee to put things in perspective well enough that when you would have executed that tournament, that it would be good. So for for so we could so we could um attract further sponsorship for for grander national netball league and also for future for future um, tournaments oh, so yeah. it's it, it's it was, it was indeed a pleasure i just want to wish you well and i just want to um song the call to to the um to the members of the committee that you mentioned that when we when we decide to to, to serve let's put our hands to the plow and work hard i am sure that there are some tasks that we are to we are to complete and oh, yeah. um maybe we should start meeting to do that and um encourage the rest of us to be supportive and whenever we are called on to do what is required then we can do it so it could be all for the better of sports better for netball and better for our nation as we continue to use sports as one of the tools to market our country oh yes and i must say that jennifer nantan she as the um the real coach she has had a she, along with her team, Verna Graham and Ray Kazemi, they have been putting some virtual um, programs for the national team, for the players who are on training. And I must compliment Jennifer for coming on board because, you know, Jennifer also is netball. She has represented Dominica for many years in netball. And I'm just happy that we have this team working with us to to just elevate the standard of our play 
in Dominica. You know, it's strange you mentioned that because I was just about to ask, you haven't gone through the, the, the planning committee and to give us the information. I was just about to ask you, what was the impact of COVID um, as it relates to the, to, the term, to the preparation of our national team? Oh, well, during, during the COVID, what we did, the affili our affiliates ran courses, and umpiring courses, um, coaching courses. So we used that medium at the time to upgrade many players. So at least now you know that even with the teams, they have at least one coach or one qualified umpire with them. And this is what we wanted all along. You know, why come to a game, you do not know the real rules of the game and you just talk. You know, most times players say the umpires, they don't like the umpires, but if they know the rules of the games, if they go on and they follow what that has to be done, you know, things will work out. And I'm just happy that they got the opportunity during the COVID for them to do all these courses. Okay. So, but as it relates to the mental and the fitness of those of those players, how, how are we doing that? How are we um, doing that? And how are we monitoring that? Well, as I said, the technical committee, they are doing the work that they have to do. Um, remember, we just had to put aside our league. The games were right on target. So the players were already getting themselves together. So it's just up to the technical committee to continue the work ahead. But we, but we cannot, since, that we can, since we cannot bring them together, um, to congregate because currently it's it's against the 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 the, 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 the rules as it relates to the COVID protocols. Um, are we getting them to be to to be because as you said we are, we're moving towards match fitness with the um, execution of the National Netball League, but yes. now we cannot play. But but at least the players should be engaged in maintaining their their individual fitness levels. Well, that is what we have asked them to do as individuals. They can go out, they can do their runs and so on. And Jennifer and Ray, they have already been sending their virtual um, exercises, what they have to do. So they have to report, they have to send videos of they doing what they were supposed to do. Oh, okay. So it's up to them if they really want to be a national player, the work the emphasis is on them. They have to do what they got to do and leave it to the technical staff to look at them and say, yes, really, what I sent to them, they will do in the work. Okay. So it's up to them. Yeah, that is certain, certainly commendable that you can actually uh, monitor the, 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 the performance of the individuals as they, um, as they, as they are working on their own within the constraints of the covid, COVID. 19. Yeah. All right, but it was it was a pleasure having you and um, Mrs. Walsh. Are there any other um are there any other concerns that you want to point out point out to us? Well, no, not really. All I need is for the players to at least if they know it's it's not mandatory for them to be vaccinated, but at least if they want to know their status they need to go out and do the antigen test and the PCR test. This will allow them to train when the Ministry of Health gives us the okay, because we want no one not knowing their status to be part and parcel of a training squad. And right about now, let me just say belated birthday greetings to our own ambassador, Lorraine, whose birthday was on Sunday. I hope she did enjoy herself. Right about now, it's UN time, and I know she's at the UN. Okay, happy birthday to you, um, um, <laughs> Honor. I'm sorry, Your Excellency, Ambassador Ambassador Lauren Banish Roberts. So it was a pleasure having you um, with us um, this evening, Mrs. Walsh, and um, I look forward to working with you um, in the various committees that you've assigned me to 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 work with, and. Um, it's a continued pleasure. So it was nice having you on the Sports Connection this yeah. evening. It was a pleasure. Pleasure. All right, then. Thank you Thank and you. good evening. Well, okay, welcome and bye-bye. And God bless you. All right. Okay, we're going to take a break at this point and we'll be right back um, on this, if, this episode of the Sports Connection. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, Portland and tile cement, steel rods, galvanized and fence pipe, 
and Rudolph Thomas can meet all your wire needs. Galvanized roofing sheets, doors, windows, toilet sets, face basins, and bidets. PVC piping, fittings, and lattice. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. And Rudolph Thomas is your one-stop shop for hard-to-find items like fiberglass mat and fiberglass resin and welding rods. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. Okay, we want to say to our listeners, those of us who are engaging us on 88.7 or 93.1 or 107.9 FM, we want to say thank you for staying tuned with us. We have a call on the line. Let's take this caller. Caller, welcome to the Sports Connection. Good evening. Hello, good day. How are you? Good night. I'm, I'm good. Good evening, caller. In, in um, Connection, is a basketball thing, right? Yeah. How come you, know, you can have a, a hungry man sharing food? Well, um, caller, I, I, I don't want to make that... Um, that basketball conversation, anything personal, I apologize, but if I'm not going to go on any personal attack. Um, I must say to you, frankly, that Maggie yeah, is my okay, friend. But the, the problem is, everybody wants to do what in their own personal interest, my brother. You cannot have hungry man chain food. No, no. Again, I will tell you, and um, I, I, I would like to engage you, but we, we cannot we cannot take it with a personal twist. Are, are, we, are we on... Are we good with that? Huh? I say I am willing to engage you in discussion, but on the onset we're not putting any personal, any okay, any personal. Okay, okay. So then I'm throwing con. Do you? I throwing con for foul. No, you are foul. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> huh? I'm throwing con. I foul it. What do you want to tell me? Color, color. Yes. Color. Yes. If I like con, I will eat con. Okay. Well, so All right. yes. don't, don't give hungry man to share food. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, caller, um, yeah. is that all you have to share for this evening? What do you want me to say again? Just no, no, I don't know. I mean, if you have anything else, then you can say it. If you don't, then we, we just free up the lines for the callers. Do not let hungry man share food, my brother. All right. Thank you very much, caller, and God bless you. Have a nice evening. Okay. Same to you. God bless you too, my brother. Yes, I. Okay. We, like I said, um, the numbers to call are 448-7334. Uh, that's a local line of 305-906-6186. But what I will not entertain is any personal attack on any of my guests or, or any person in the public for that matter of fact. And the sports connection is is geared at positivity. I am a one person who lives by the mantra. If a problem exists, we're looking for solutions. So we're forgetting about the problem. Once you've established that there's a problem, the next step is solution. So if we're going to contribute, we're going to contribute towards the solution. All right. Um... As, as we said earlier, um, I was expecting to to be joined with um, to I'm expecting to be joined by Mr. Um, Heston Charles as we discuss some issues as relates to to West Indies cricket. Um, we we want to start. We have been hearing of um, calls for the uh, calls of concerns from various leaders uh, in, in the region and sports personalities as it relates to the selection of the West Indies um, of the West Indies squad for the um, for the upcoming World Cup and um, let me just read out that squad and um, we have Kieran Pollard who's the captain, Nicholas Puran is the vice captain, Fabian Allen, Darren Bravo, Ruston Chase and um, Andre Fletcher, Chris Gale, Shimron Hetmeyer, Evan Lewis, Obed McCoy, Ravi Rampol, Andre Russell, Lendell Simmons, Ocean Thomas, and Hayden Walsh Jr. And the reserves are Darren, Darren Bravo, Sheldon Cottrell, Jason Holden, Aki Hussein. And um, by just looking at that list, I'm seeing a, a very Trinidad, Trinidad kind of um, polarity on that on that team and um we have the likes of Kieran Pollard, Nicholas Puran, Dwayne Bravo, um what are the other Ravi Rampol I, I, I was wondering when Ravi when I saw Ravi Rampol performing at the Caribbean Premier League I was I was uh, I was rather surprised at the performance because he might have been one of the leading with the, if not the leading wicket takers if not the leading wicket taker he might have been 
one of the leading wicket takers in this in the, this year's version of the Caribbean Premier League. We're saying by his performance, he has been recalled to to the West Indies um, T20 squad. We also have Lendell Simmons, and um, the, all these are um, Trinidadians, and we also have Dan Bravo on the reserve team, who will also travel, um, but will will not be able to play except um, one of the one of the um, those on the main squad who uh, would no longer be able to play or be disabled for that tour. But um, I think it's 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 very Poland friendly, I should say, for want of a better word. Um, I'm happy to see Ruston Chase. I think Ruston Chase was the leading wicket taker, sorry, the leading run scorer in the um, recently held Caribbean um, Premier League. And I think he and Ravi Rampol, these two might have picked themselves on the West Indies T20 squad. Um, I'll be happy to to hear the sentiments of, of, of the listeners who are following on the Facebook we have a caller coming in. We have a caller. Caller, good evening. Welcome to the Sports Connection. Caller, good evening. Welcome to the Sports Connection. Caller, good evening. Welcome to the Sports Connection. I think I might have. Caller, good evening. Welcome to the Sports Connection. Hello. Yes, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, is it Oprah? No, this is not Oprah. This is Yuri John, another Saint Joe, another another fellow from Saint Joe. Are oh, you from Saint Joe? Yes, I am. I'm not. I'm not live on the air, right? No? Yes, you are. You are certainly live on the Sports Connection, right here on Kyrie FM. Oh no, I didn't want. I didn't want to be live, really. I um. Oh, okay. I, that I could call. The, I, I could speak to you off the off the live line. No, it's it's not possible to speak to me on the line because you have a program going on right here in the studios, and that is the Sports Connection. But it was nice of you to touch base from you this overseas line. All right, well, all right. Keep on a good job, man. All right. God bless you. Yes, we apologize for this right there. I'm the scholar trying to reach Oprah, but um, this is certainly not Oprah. I might have St. Joseph roots. I am from St. Joseph, like Oprah is, for those of us wondering, but this is certainly not Oprah. Yeah, so uh, we we're talking, I, I, we, we want to just have the lines open so persons could call and to give us their sentiments or their version. Um, we're hearing some discussions in the media about match fitness and, and, and consistency. We heard of, of, of some of our Caribbean leaders, um, certainly the, the Prime Minister of Barbados, who, who was um, critical of the, of the selection. And that selection herald, um, headed by Roger Harper, the chief selector, for the um, non-inclusion of 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 um, non-inclusion of of Jason Holder, who is the current world number one all rounder in um, 2020. So, so give us let's get some calls if possible um, as it relates to this team. Though let's share our sentiments as to the squad, the West Indies squad for for this this competition. And we we know that this competition is going to start. Um, in October, I think it's October 23rd, um, if my memory serves me right, and um, I know for sure we will be bold enough against England. We'll be bold enough against England. Um, oh my gosh, my internet is out. Please. Yes. Let's take a pause for the course and we'll be right back. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, Portland and tile cement, steel rods, galvanized and fence pipe. And Rudolph Thomas can meet all your wire needs. Galvanized roofing sheets, doors, windows, toilet sets, face basins and bidets. PVC piping, fittings and lattice. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. And Rudolph Thomas is your one-stop shop for hard-to-find items like fiberglass mat and fiberglass resin and welding rods. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth.
okay um i might have said that um holder or referred to holder as the world number one ranking all rounder in t20 um, um i want to apologize for that that is certainly not the truth he is the world number one um all rounder in test cricket and um some persons think some persons think that he um he he is one of the most thinking individuals in the West Indies cricket and um he might he should have come um, commanded a pick or he should have been able to to select or be to to gain a pick sorry on that squad but um but as it is we 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 continue to keep the lines open um the internet which dropped a while ago um is now back so i think i should be okay with the continued discussions um let me see if we still have the internet come on come on come on come on i yeah, might still yeah but um we we recently saw the the western this team in performance against the and i'm talking about the western this female team and they too are preparing ahead of next year's competition um they and there 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 are a lot of of, of um how do i say it? women's competition around the world west indies was just finished playing they completed this week the um the five match series one day series we have a call on the line caller welcome to the sports connection good evening uh, good night Yuri. yes good evening sir i i think you're right you know he's all wrong in test cricket yes he is he is yes, test cricket. so if my tongue slipped i apologize for that he's the number one of all he's the number one all wrong in the world in test cricket for sure test cricket. yeah not, not nothing, the other. certainly not i mean when you look at but what, I'm, but what i'm saying is that i mean he hasn't been doing that well you know uh, recently you know he just not been doing that well recently you know but at the same time i believe to myself my brother, if me a motley can make a kiss for you, I think I think <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a strong case. Eh? <laughs> well, if you my mate can make a motley make a kiss for Jason, I think he has a strong case. Well, well, I, I mean, but you know, but you know something, I don't, I, I, I don't understand. To me, I won't put the man on 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 to come up as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as if somebody gets injured and he coming in. Well, I think, but that's why he's running on the reserve team. Team. I think somewhere that's a disrespect, way. Eh? I believe the, the why the, because the, because, the, because he's because he's the captain of the test team. He, he he should automatically get a pick on the um on the T20 squad. Is nah, that what you say? What, what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that I think Jason can he, Jason just come up and he can do well. And I believe to myself, I have the gut feeling that if they, if, they, if they put him on that team, he will do well for that. He will do well for that. For that Olympics, I, 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 I believe well, that. Well, it's not Olympics, it's the T20 World Cup. But, but Colin, yeah, let, let me see. I believe he'll do well. Well, yes. You know, uh, you just, they just took him, give him a break. Yeah, you know, so, give him a break. You, you know when, you know when we play, the, when we play the lotto, we, we just hope we, we know we, in our mind, we know we're going to do well. And then but, when we fail, when we fail, we say, boy. <laughs> boy. But between me and you, uh, how, how are you looking at Chris Gill now? Well, certainly, I will tell you frankly, uh, and a lot of people don't share that sentiment. How are you think, looking at Chris Gill? I think Chris Gill has nothing doing on West Indies team at that stage. I, I'm one of the persons who is completely against um, brick wall sport. And Chris Gale has served the West Indies well for many, many, many years. I think I he mean, should be out. He should be out. I mean, when you look at Chris Gale, I looked at the CPL. And when fellas come bowling fast at Chris Gale, you always wonder if, if he missed or used to be anything like he used to be. I, I think he lost it. Yeah, man. And, 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 and to go and do the World Cup, I, I mean... People but will be saying, okay, you give him a good send-off. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm one of the persons who believe, especially in elite sports, that when people, when people would have state their cases and they would meet the selection criteria, if I meet the selection selection criteria, I don't think somebody else should be should be um, should be selected um, me. over me if I if I if I would perform them. So, but certainly, Chris Gold, when you look at all the batsmen in West Indies cricket, the Evan Lewis, the Lindell Simmons, the um, even the Rufa Ford Fowler that we just re recently saw, and many of the other youngsters, those of them that were performing in the West Indies um, competition, playing for the West Indies and then into the CPL. I think if you make your case for your selection, you make your case for your selection. Well, let me for tell me, you, Chris Gill, I, 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 I'm not in I, for Chris Gill's selection. I think Chris Gill, like a boxer, he don't know when to quit. 
<laughs> you know some boxers they do it well when they were what they don't know when to quit. <laughs> so, you, know, so, you also know when to leave, you know. Uh, you know about you know, I think he's forty something years, uh, he look he do what he do for us, we happy. I, I like Chris Hill because hey, look, he could burst at any time and score once for you. But you can't go with the hope that hey look he'll burst in that twenty twenty game World Cup game and he'll do something for you. It right. might not happen at all. Let me tell it, you see twenty twenty cricket and world cricket now is not so much talent in that you only depended on the talent but back in the in yesteryear when West Indies would dominate the cricket or when England and Australia would be big because of just talent. No cricket is scientific. You have the cameras, you have all the data that is being collated and analyzed and and if I can see I am no cricket coach. If I can see Chris Gulkin on the fast bowling anymore, especially if you're close to him. I mean where you he can't run between in wicket anymore. You're not quick in between the wickets. And then you won, and then you're wondering if Chris Gale, when I look at him run, when I look at that, when I looked at him run in the CPL, you wondering if he would pass uh, a fitness test, the beep test. I, I am wondering. Think, I'm I not saying he has not passed it. A, I don't think he will pass no test. They just give me the buy. No, I'm not saying. One thing, if me, I'm, if if he passed the fitness test, he passed the fitness test. I'm just telling you from me looking from my naked eye. I am not sure he was capable of passing or, or performing uh, at an elite level. I believe to myself he get a buy. Well, but they let the man through. But I'm hoping that I'm hoping that West Indies would be would be looking to. Um, to give him a good send off and maybe that daddy will come well, well, let me tell you something you see that West Indies team there if them fellas do what they have to do nobody will beat in West Indies because they are 2020 you know nobody gonna, if they really take their time and study the game properly nobody can beat West Indies in their 2020 you know them fellas 2020 that's their game but, but Kola, Kola while you are there Kola if you look at the CPL and when I look at the IPL and I look at the CPL and I look at the other um, the other um, T20 elite competitions around the globe. I am I'm almost not satisfied with the consistency of West Indies or the West Indies competition with scores in excess of 165, 170 go up. Oh, I, that man is something else, you know. When you watch the IPL, you've well, seen it 200. is a mountain for them. Uh, 180 is a mountain for them. I don't understand this guy. Yeah, it's like a big mountain, man. You know, take all the time and uh, be smart, man. You know, as a well, man don't use your common sense. A lot of the out, you know, them fellas, they, they, them fellas giving away their wicket. If you look at all those guys out in the West Indies players, they give away their wicket, you know. Things, balls that outside, the wide, they're going for that, caught behind. You know, you see where they feel, how they feel set. You're going to hit a shot where, hey, look, somebody catching you in the boundary. And you know how the field set. As a cricketer, you have to be smart. You have to have common sense. You have to look. You have to have good eyes. Yeah. And I some of those fellas. I don't know. You know. You know. You know cricket. You have to have a good. You have to have good eyes. But Kola, you but have to be seen properly. I don't need to test the eyes, but you have to be seen properly to see that ball. Yes, that that may be true. But Kola, something I don't always want to dwell on the negatives, all right? And so with the squad that we have, what do you think of the squad in terms of the positivities? What 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 do you take from the positive aspects of the club of the squad? Well, boy, I think, uh, well, you see what they talk, I, I think they have maturity, they have in between, they have young players, they, they, they mix it, they, they mix it in. And if the team gelling together, my brother, West Indies can grab that again. Well, uh, I, I, I must say, with, if, if Ravi Rampol can perform the way he did, if they come to the ball, party, I tell you that, if they come to the party, yeah. <laughs> if they come to the I, I, party, I, they tell me them. I think if we, if we can, we, the Ocean Thomas and the Hayden Walsh Jr. are that exciting little play, that exciting young player. And I think if Andrew Russell and Lendell Simmons, and Nicholas Purans and the Kieran Pollards, if if they can continue to perform, I tell you, if nice. they come to the party, we good. If they come to the party, the fence. So, 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 so what do you think of of Andre Fletcher as the wicket keeper and uh, wicket keeper and batsman? Well, Andre Fletcher doing his thing. Uh, I, 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 he has plenty time to go to to play cricket. He doing his thing. But all he has to do is be patient, man, and do what he has to do. If the man patient and do what he has to do, the man can get runs. He can, he can perform all around. He good in the field, you know. But yes, but the older fellows, man, they have to, you know. These guys, some of them slow now. They slow him down. You know, fast between the wickets. They don't fast on the outfield fielding. 
You, you realize what Sinis fellas don't do, don't, don't do die for catches and don't do it and do to their pants? <laughs> you realize that? <laughs> West Indian cricket don't no. do to their pants. Man, let me for tell you, you, like that. Let me tell you, let me tell you, caller. I'm looking at this squad and, I, and I'm saying, I once the batsman, if you ask me, can show up. That's what we do. Let me tell you, you Kieran Pollard, Nicholas Puran, Fabian Allen. Evan Lewis, um, Andrew Fletcher in his own rights. If Chris Shimon Hetmeyer, if Chris Gale could, could give us anything that he's capable of giving us, I mean, based on his historical perspectives, if those people, if our batsmen can show up at the World Cup, I mean, we really have a good team. The inclusion of Dwayne Bravo on the team for me, for me, I want to shake the, I want to shake the, um, I want to shake the, 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 the selector's hand for that. Because when you look at Dwayne Bravo, when you look at Dwayne Bravo, um, and you look at his performance as the captain of the St. Kitts Patriots this year, the first five games they won that, and then you when he got in, when he got injured, and he started to go, the, the team went on a, on a on a on a drop. I mean, even he was still playing when they started to lose, but the kind of leadership that he brings, yeah, man, he good. The kind of leadership that he brings, I I, I think mm -hmm, I like it. You could always see him trying to actually on the field giving that experience to the up and coming young young players you know to become better and i think he was like a nice little maestro and i'm hoping that he can bring that leadership even if he's not captain or vice captain but when he would have gotten his, his opportunity to perform to perform i would i'll be i'll be happy that he can bring that energy and that encouragement to our players that, but that team if he gets is uh, i think it's a well fought team but uh, boy, just on the fourth you didn't know that, that i always say boy they, do, they didn't they didn't pick jason man. i don't know why i don't know well, what what is the reason why you know but i don't find any reason why it was justified not to take him well, I, I, I would not, take a chance with him i am not one of, i am not one of those persons that's gonna call for jason i'm uh, um, inclusion on the team i think um in terms of the team that we have um, I think there's a strong enough team. I'm not sure about the bowlers, the Obed McCoys, Ravirian Paul, Andre Russell, Kieran Pollard, Dwayne Bravo. I think we, we, we have a good we have a good attack. Hayden Walsh Jr., o Ocean Thomas. I think we have a good yeah, attack. We, we, have, we, have, we have a nice yeah, balanced team. team. Yeah, but Kola, we have we, we are running short on time, right? Yeah. And, um, I'm happy to have well, you with me. Stay well, alive. Well, well, once me a mock we call for Jason Jason Holder. <laughs> something, something, something in the make it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 Prime Minister Mia Motley, what's she calling for Jason? I, I, I am back in Prime Minister Mia Motley. Caller, caller, I wanted to ask you the question. What do you think of the West Indies women's performance? The five match series, they, 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 they won. Was it, was it, was it two matches? Was it two matches? No, they, they won, won only won one. one. They won one. Which is the last match which was captained by Deandre Dottin. Yes, um, an exciting finish, but, yeah, um, exciting finish. but when you look at well, the let scores, me tell you, let me tell you, let me mm. tell you, I always tell people that look at that. If they can win the last match there, they could have they, they, they could have win the four others. Well, well, anytime two teams play, anyone can win it. Eh? No, I try to tell you these women because the captain is, is the captain not there. Is the captain not giving them the runs? You know, she, the, the captain was, was not Taylor. Oh, the Taylor, yes, she's not there. So but she was giving them that runs and that and and that and that booster. But, but so you know, a lot of a lot of people wants a person that boosting some a team and he's not there. Bad for you. No, but but Kola, but is do you think that is do you think that is that is good for West Indies cricket that we we even in the women's team they have to depend on one person to win. Nah, that's never that's never a good thing. I mean, you look yeah, at Haley Matthews. Haley Matthews will be performing well in um the other tournament she participate around the world. Yes, but playing well. for the West Indies team, you know. But I think the West Indies team was incapable of of scoring a lot of runs. And when when we look at when we look at um. In India and Australia, things like India and Australia, and England and New Zealand. England. For for all women to go yeah, past them, it, I think it's going to be a challenge because when you look at England, Australia, for for example, right? Australia. Um, India scored this morning 225 for eight, right? In their 50 overs, and and in Australia scored that in 41 overs, you know. Why well, people look in, in people say Australia that scored two hundred and twenty six for one. These people serious about their game. I I don't know. I don't know. You I I look at even even the men team. 
they do have that drug dealer vibes in them a killer instinct finish they do have it that's, that's their problem you know if they have that killer instinct and that thing that they're going for the win let me tell you that australia all those other teams my brother and silly fat woman those things them they don't give enough you know you can say what you want about these people but these people doesn't give up you know the last ball the last ball is saying they still want to win you know yeah, but, but, then, but you, you have to stay. But you have to stay in the match, caller. Yeah, I mean, but you have the killer instinct. That's the problem. Yeah. When these people do have the killer instinct in them. It's just like football. Just like football. Even Dominica too. They don't have the finishing touch. When they go in front, they have to go for the kill. They're not going for it. They're not scoring goals. They're not. They're not. They're not taking. I see. I see. Sometimes the West Indies. Oh, you only have a team for fifty runs. For seven wickets, and you're letting them score 200 and something runs on you as the UK article away. What is wrong with you? Oh, look at it away. Gotta got it, brother. A good, a, a good wind blows. A good wind blows because it took <laughs> a good wind blows. Some brother, some good cross, some wap up. But, but what's Australia in, in a tour match? In a tour match on, 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 on the 18th, right? Australia women scored. Well, England, Australia women scored 278 for nine. Right, and then the India women scored 240 to 47 in the 50 overs. To a 270, that's five point something runs per over. That is way, that is so much more than what our West Indies women have. Yeah, I've been they, scoring they, they, in the competition. They're not reaching that score. That yeah, 200 so, over 200 mark, they refuse to reach there. So, but, so but, it's, not, it's, not, it's not enough. It's not enough for them to win. The runs they're scoring cannot enable them to win because they do have enough runs on the board. Well, call That's a problem. Yeah, but I want to continue that conversation, and I hope you I hope you give us a call next week because I want to put a different perspective uh, uh, from West Indies women's cricket from a different perspective. And next week we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about programs for West Indies cricket because um, I am not sure if this game is being made popular among women in the Caribbean. And um, it's it's been many years now the West Indies women have been playing, and um. And not enough cricket. So I'm not enough cricket among our young girls. Well, and in the future, in the future, according to what we have, I don't see, I, I don't see this, <laughs> where they get in the cadre of people that speak. They falling back to you know where them, where them now. Well, we'll, we'll talk about the programs next week. So it's now almost two minutes past eight. Yeah, it was man, a pleasure no, having you. I, I enjoyed a little banter with you. Um, I just want to tell you, okay. Sometimes we have to. <laughs> sometimes we have to think a little bit more positive. Um, because we cannot always be negative. So, yeah, but yeah, it's a pleasure. Not, any benefit yeah, it, we no. are not just the benefit of it, but, but present for what we have, that is good. All right, and be positive. But the West Indies women, they, 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 uh, most of the, the, the people on the team, they're very good, but it's just that they have to have more determination. Yeah, they have, they have to start to perform with the bat. That is where yeah, I think, performer, that's where I think we, we're lacking, our performance with the bat. All right, but anyway, it's a pleasure having you, Caller. Good evening. Yeah, man, have a blessed night. All right, and blessings. blessings. Take it easy, man. Okay. So this was another episode of the Sports Connection. We, as we make way for the next, the next program, um, we have already in studios Mr. Simeon Albert, um, with the Next Level program. So once again, it was a pleasure having you, our listeners, on the various um frequencies of Kyrie FM, the Genuine Sons of Dominica, and those of us that were following on our Facebook page. I say a pleasant good evening to you. Did you love this show? Then call us at 614-3385 to find out ways you can support this program. Thank you for tuning in. Keep it locked to your genuine sound, Kyrie FM.